Hi, here is Tomek Kopera from Beer Guy PL. Uh, today I've met uh, my favorite one, uh, beer book writer, uh, Randy Mosher. Nice to meet you. It's a nice uh, honor you. For, for me to, to meet you Thank and you. to... to I can tell you that uh, I really admire your books. I uh, I like it for your uh, witty uh, style, uh, for uh, the mix of uh, uh, history, new wave, new approach to the brewing, practical uh, attitude, and some uh, general impression. It's really great stuff. Uh, especially I like uh, radical brewing and, and uh, tasting beer. Uh, we've take uh, we've talking that uh, there will be a new book. Yes, there's a new book coming in the fall of uh, 2014 it will be uh, it's called mastering homebrewing and it's a full complete how-to homebrewing guide that starts at the beginning and teaches people how to brew mm -hmm. when you do a big homebrewing book like that you have to decide how to make it different from everybody else's book and mm -hmm. so what I tried to do because John Palmer has a great book and Ray Daniels has a great book and I wanted to do something that builds on my strength and what my interests are and also I think in things that I think people need to know that are not necessarily out there so the, uh, the biggest chapter in the book is on ingredients so the so the, really trying to help people understand malt and how the flavors develop during malting and kilning and how those flavors what the vocabulary of flavor is and how to think about them in terms of putting recipes together and the same for hops so I took 70 different varieties of hops and I put them into categories that I created unique names for and so one of one category covers sort of from Hollertau not quite to Sots so those hops that we call spicy which you know no one really knows what that word means with hops but it's we use it anyway so and then within each group I put them in order so when you're trying to uh, maybe you're familiar and use uh, one particular type of hop and you're like want to try something new or maybe you can't get that hop which is very common these days of course so you have some easy substitutes that and some idea of which direction the change might be from what the hop that you thought about and then a, a large amount of information about recipe formulation and how to think like an artist. So I have spent my whole career, uh, of course, as, as a writer, but also as a visual artist, doing packaging design and branding and things like that. And so I really have thought about art a lot from a practical standpoint. When you do art, it's not just, oh, let's make some art. It's There are some tools and some ways of thinking. If you think about any art, if, harmony and rhythm and contrast and complementary flavors and or colors or sounds or whatever so you have these tools to work with and so uh, thinking that way thinking about recipes and also thinking about how do we make beer more like a chef makes food in terms of grouping in grouping ingredients into blocks of layering flavors coming back and repeating similar flavors again and again uh, to really help people understand how to make beer from a flavor standpoint out because you can you can learn to make styles and never really understand flavor if you just follow the books and make a pale ale you use pale ale malt right and that's what most people do is sort of really not thinking about it but if you can build a beer from a flavor standpoint you can easily make it fit a style so it's really a different try and give people a different perspective and, and make them think about all these decisions that they do when they're when they're making a batch of, of beer uh, and and giving them some tools to think about so so I think it will be um, useful not only for homebrewers but maybe uh, for craft brewers for starting breweries which I would hope so I mean it's really it's it's intended for homebrewing but everybody needs to, to formulate uh, recipes we are the one family <laughs> and so so many people come from homebrewing and really whether you do or you don't really getting down and understanding those flavors and thinking about putting recipe together not everybody's doing that so so i'm hoping that that will cause people to think more it gives you more options you think that there are 70 types of hops there are at least that many kinds of malts but most people use maybe five different malts maybe five different hops over and over and over again because they're comfortable with them yeah. they know them if they're familiar it's just like oh we get some of this and we get some of this but you should be using everything you should be all using all the different flavors because if you really want to express yourself you need all the tools you can get yeah uh, Randy could you tell me uh, what is your uh, opinion about in which uh, direction uh, our craft beer revolution is going on well I think what's really exciting for me is that it's going in the same direction that it's always been going right because in some it's easy in some industries where once 
the really creative people, the small people, the people who have passion and enthusiasm and risk their lives and their homes to create a, an industry. So many industries, people with a lot of money just sort of come in and take over. And, and we don't see that with craft beer. You know, certainly there are companies that are very successful and people are making some money, but there's still uh, a feeling of passion and a feeling of people doing something because it's the some, right thing to do, mission. that they want to do it a certain way. It's a mission, exactly. And, and the people who are coming into the business are still people who don't necessarily know what they're doing. They don't know why they're doing it. They just really, really want to do it. And they'll start small or start big however they can, just that they're sort of driven into into doing it. And I think that's really fantastic because when we get to a point where it's only about business, we've lost. You know, and, and the other thing that's really very exciting for me as an American and being in this scene for a long time is seeing what's happening in Poland and Czech Republic and Brazil and and Mexico and Italy. everywhere else is like all of a sudden now is this huge explosion of interest and and uh, people trying new things and like your people are re rediscovering Brodzinski yeah. and which is very exciting. It's been a style that I've been interested in mm -hmm. for a very long time. I brewed that beer for a Michael Jackson tasting in Chicago in 1996. He visited Chicago and I proposed to him that I would brew some dead beers and uh, he would taste and talk about them. And that was the first time I'd ever tasted it because I had to brew it yeah. to taste it. And so I've been a, always very excited about that beer. I'm very excited to find that, that uh, the homebrewers there are, are re you know, really working on that style and trying to trying to find out the the proper way to brew it and, and figure out the flavors. And, I want to scrape so off. I, uh, I love that. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. But we, we are we we are we have hope in Poland that uh, we can uh, popularize uh, Grodziski and make it uh, that it's our our proud uh, like Baltic Porter and Grodziski. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for this interview. It's very interesting. Very very. Uh, Mm, you know, uh, give me, give me power, give me, give me vision. Uh, could you, maybe you would like to say something to our viewers in Poland? Well, I would just say, uh, be yourself, be honest about what you do, uh, try new things, think about everything you do, enjoy each other's company. Beers, beers about harmony and about community and and. Uh, uh, enjoy and, and try you know discover yeah thank you thank you so much for the interview this is my great pleasure <laughs>